Welcome to ADCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today I'll be presenting a case of a 42 years old male who presented to ER with complaints of breathlessness and chest discomfort. On initial 10 second assessment, patient is conscious and oriented. Airway was patent, there is no pooling of secretions or strider. Breathing wise, respiratory rate was 32 per minute, tachypneic with saturation of 76% on room air. At this point of time, we had uh, started the patient on uh, O2 by face mask. Mm. At 10 liters, we had started. Circulation wise, patient's pulse rate was 117 per minute with the BP we could not get, it was not recordable. Mm. So we immediately placed uh, two 18 gauge IV cannulas mm. and connected the patient to cardiac monitor. Mm. And uh, we had also ordered for a 12 lead ECG. Mm. And we had started the patient uh, on uh, one uh, liter IV fluid bolus. Okay. <coughs> and also, we had also uh, asked the staff to arrange for uh, inotrop support as well. Okay. So noradrenaline was also ordered to be arranged and uh, we are planning to reassess the BP after one liter of fluid bolus. Okay. Uh, disability wise, GCS was E4, V5, M6 and patient was moving all four limbs. Mm. Pupils also were equal and reacting to light. Exposure wise, temperature of 98 degree Fahrenheit. Mm. And uh, coming to adjuncts, uh, we had done a uh, 12 lead ECG has come by that time. It showed a sinus tachycardia mm. with uh, T inversions in uh, 2 and V1, lead mm. 2 and lead V1. Mm. And also, uh, we had taken a uh, ABG which showed a, uh, a PO2 of 52 mm. in type 1 respiratory failure was there. And also, uh, there was a pH of 7.3, uh, 7.31. Which uh, with lactate of 5.4 and bicarb of uh, 17.2. Creatinine? Creatinine was 2.21. Sugars? Uh, sugars were 320. Okay. And uh, also, uh, PCO2 was uh, uh, 38. Okay. And uh, we had also done a point of care uh, ultrasound and echo was done. Okay. Uh, which showed. Um, uh, echo showed actually uh, concentric LVH mm. with uh, RARV dilatation and oh. also there was severe pulmonary hypertension features mm. and also the LV volume was also low. Oh. And uh, lung uh, point of care also we did uh, which mm. showed uh, no B lines or mm. no, no signs of any consolidations mm. uh, as in any uh, starry sky uh, mm. pattern or any, nothing was B seen. B lines, out. if there are more B lines, what will no, you B suspect? lines was not seen. If it was there, what will you suspect? And we will have to uh, suspect uh, pulmonary edema. Pulmonary. Uh, Patient is having discomfort. Also. Okay. Acute onset breathlessness, we will have to suspect that mm. also. Mm. No history of fever? Uh, no history of fever also. Mm. And uh, after that… Pneumonia, how will, how will be the picture in case uh, of pneumonia? Pneumonia, usually um, we won't be able to see lung in a normal uh, ultrasound. Mm. Uh, but in if uh, there is any consolidation, then we will be able to see the uh, lung as well as we will be able to see some starry sky patterns yes. as well. Mm. And. Uh, yeah, if uh, any associated effusion also we will be able to see. Mm. In this patient there was nothing, no mm. such changes were there and there was no evidence of any effusion. And uh, No pericardial effusion? No pericardial effusion. Okay. And uh, further uh, we went ahead. Uh, JVP was? JVP was elevated, no? Uh, JVP was elevated. No uh, pedal edema? Uh, no pedal edema. Okay. And uh, that time we had again reassessed, uh, saturation was uh, improved to 92. Mm. But uh, still with 10 litre O2, it was uh, reduced. So we started on 15 litre O2. Mm. Uh, we changed to NRBM. NRBM. Non rebreathable. Okay. okay. Uh, we changed it to, and after that, it improved to 94. It was staying at 94. Okay. And uh, further, the tachypnea was persisting. Okay. And also, uh, again, BP was rechecked. Uh, there was no improvement in BP. So we had started on noradrenaline. Okay. Uh, and uh, 4 ml per hour, we had started and we planned to tighten. How, how was the IVC? IVC was uh, my, uh, around 1.5 cm okay. and it was not uh, much collapsing. Okay. okay. And uh, further the heart rate remained uh, around 120-130 rate it was remaining. Okay. Okay. So, uh, in view of this, uh, even uh, since the BP has not improved and okay. also uh, the uh, saturation was maintaining only at high percentage of uh, uh, O2 requirement, okay. uh, we had uh, suspected uh, pulmonary embolism for this patient. Okay. Coming to that secondary survey, mm. before we uh, went ahead with the management, the patient uh, is actually a 42-year-old male patient mm. uh, who is a known case of uh, hypertensive mm. uh, hypertension, NHL, DLBCL, uh, diffuse large B-cell lymphoma on uh, ARCHOP regimen okay. with a post-renal transplant patient mm. uh, 10 years back uh, for uh, chronic glomerular nephritis. Mm. And also the patient was on immunosuppressants for the same. Mm. Patient now came with complaints of acute onset of uh, breathlessness uh, with chest discomfort mm. that morning. Mm. And um, 
he was also complaining of associated chest tightness as well and this uh, is sweating in thing no, sweating there is also sweating also was there no. and uh, no other complaints of any vomiting fever <coughs> uh so any syncopal episodes was there okay. or any reduced sensorium or mm. altered sensorium was there mm. uh further uh, patient was on uh, immunosuppressants uh, tacrolimus mycophenolate mofetil vicolon mm. and also he was on the arso regimen for the uh, nhl mm. and also uh, on hypertensive uh, patient he was taking only nebicard okay and there no any other allergy to any medications mm. and uh, <coughs> further uh, we had uh, when cad examination wise cad cad history sir no cad history okay. Okay. examination wise uh, patient's uh, chest was actually clear mm. chest was clear and also a uh, heart rate uh, cvs wise also s1 s2 was at no murmurs were mm. there mm. and uh, cns wise uh, gcs was uh, as we said 15 15 and uh, okay. pupils are equal and reacting to light okay. and he was moving all four limbs okay. no so not suspecting any focal deficits also okay and also coming to git also it was soft and non tender okay so um, here the here the patient presented with sudden onset of breathlessness yeah. right so uh, how will you approach a patient with sudden onset of breathlessness what all are the differential diagnosis you will keep uh, in mind uh, we have to uh, most commonly uh, it can be either acute pulmonary edema mm. or uh, we will have to suspect uh, any acute uh, asthma severe uh, acute status, exacerbation of bronchial asthma, asthma yes or any acute exacerbation of copd copd we have to suspect or we will have to in case of uh, pediatric patients and all we have to suspect foreign body mm. okay. obstruction we have to suspect uh, this are main uh, pulmonary edema pulmonary embolism pulmonary embolism okay and uh, then further uh, since the patient was still uh, not improving with the inotrope support also mm. it was bps still non recordable so mm. we uh, didn't wait for any investigations further mm. we had taken all labs and sent mm. d including d dimer uh, and all we have sent but uh, and uh, cardiac enzymes also so um, in this patient um, the, you were suspecting pulmonary embolism right pulmonary embolism so what what all are the risk factors in this case for uh, for uh, development of pulmonary embolism in this case a uh, patient uh, is a uh, known uh, malignancy mm. history is there with active treatment is there patient was not bedridden right not bedridden He was ambulant, mm. not bedridden. Uh, there is no other previous histories of DVTs over there, mm. uh, or any mobilization, uh, mm. long travel history, mm. or any other uh, surgical mm. history or any trauma history. Hypercoagulable uh, states. Uh, Hypercoagulable states also mm. not uh, mm. diagnosed. Okay. And uh, also, he was not any other on any other medications. Uh, mm. If it was a female patient, we have to uh, suspect other. We have to ask for regarding OCP use. Mm. or any hormone replacement therapy the patient is taking any estrogen so um, ecg in this case patient ecg was showing sinus tachycardia, sinus tachycardia, right? tachycardia so what all are the um, what all the things we will expect in a patient with pulmonary embolism ecg changes uh, most, most commonly, commonly this uh, sinus, sinus tachycardia, tachycardia, tachycardia what we'll see okay then uh, other cases it can also lead to uh, lead to arrhythmias as well mm. uh, we can see uh, most common arrhythmia is atrial fibrillation, atrial fibrillation. Oh. so new onset af can occur and mm. also any um, lbbb uh, pattern uh, lb pattern because of the rv dysfunction mm. or t inversions uh, can uh, t inversions in uh, v1 to v4 For, usually yeah. can be seen then uh, right ventricular strain patterns and right ventricular hypertrophy s1 q3 t3 yeah. mm. uh, s1 q3 t3 is the mm. most uh, classical uh, finding Physi- okay and uh, what, what about in, what about in x ray x ray changes in x ray uh, most commonly uh, it, it will be normal mm. findings uh, mm. Uh, and then sometimes it can we can see two <coughs> signs name signs are mm. only two of them mm. uh, western marker sign yes, and uh, hampton some sign western mm. marker sign is like uh, oligemia of the lung face will be seen mm. okay and uh, in uh, uh, hampton some sign will be there will be wedge shaped okay. opacity okay uh, just above the diaphragm and all it will be usually be there and, uh, and uh, uh, 2d echo we will we'll see a uh, 2d echo mostly we will see that ra rv uh, dysfunction will be there mm. dilatation will be there rv failure flattening of interventricular uh, septum in septum mm. and also rwma regional mm. wall motion abnormalities will be seen mostly in the free wall of right ventricle right and septum motion mostly will be thinned out or will be bulging into the left ventricle yes and that also will reduce the compliance of left ventricle so and uh, he in this patient patient had uh, rv dilatation no uh, ra rv dilatation was there then also named sign was uh, is this uh, mcconnell sign mm. the mcconnell sign <laughs> it will be the apex will be spread mm. the apex is tethered at mm. uh, to the left ventricle so mm. we won't we'll see the apex moving mm. but the rest of the uh, the free wall anal won't be moving okay, okay. so right. um, how did you manage this patient further so since the patient uh, did not improve uh, with our initial fluid management and inotrope support mm. 
uh, we had uh, not waited for Pishnu further. Pishnu started on NORAD, right? Yeah, mm. NORAD mm. was started and it was titrated. Mm. We uh, almost raised 20, also it didn't uh, improve much. Mm. Only 90, 60 was maximum we could get. Okay. So we had, uh, uh, without waiting for any further investigations, we had given an injection heparin, uh, mm. 5000 mm. unit uh, bolus, IV bolus was given. Mm. And further we had arranged that time for the RT, uh, RTP, mm. reverse uh, re recombinant tissue plasminogen Active. activator. Mm. What was the dose of uh, Alteplase? We took Alteplase, uh, mm. we took uh, 100 mg. Mm. In that, uh, 10 mg was given as uh, bolus dose. Mm. After that, uh, the rest 90 mg was given infusion. over uh, oh. at, uh, 2 hours. Mm. Slow okay. infusion was given. Okay. And um, further, uh, we had also, uh, uh, plan after the uh, uh, Alteplase, we had also started the patient on infusion. Mm. Apparent infusion mm. with uh, 1000 units uh, per hour. Okay. So, bolus will be uh, 80 80 uh, per, per kg mm. and uh, uh, the infusion will be 18 per kg. Okay. So uh, that we have started 1000 units per mm. hour we have started. What are the contraindications for uh, thrombolysis? Uh, thrombolysis uh, we will have to ask the prior history of any uh, mm. uh, IC bleed mm. or any uh, previous recent stroke patients uh, mm. yeah, less than 3 months and all we, sh we should not uh, thrombolyze. Mm. Uh, or any other uh, internal bleeding mm. or NGI bleed, okay. patient recent or any uh, bleeding uh, diathesis or any mm. other coagulation defect patients mm. or on any anticoagulation. you should monitor while uh, uh, thrombolyze? While thrombolyzing, uh, we'll have to uh, monitor the BP. Yes. We should uh, ke uh, usually bef uh, before uh, we are thrombolyzing, we should keep it below uh, 180, mm. uh, 110. Okay. Uh, 185 and 110 and after uh, thrombolysis we should keep it below 180 mm -hmm. and 105 okay. and uh, we should persistently keep it below that uh, BP mm -hmm. monitoring should be mm -hmm. done half hourly to one hourly mm -hmm. and uh, after that uh, we will also have to uh, monitor for the patient's sensoria yes. if he is developing any new onset headache, mm -hmm. vomiting or any uh, reduction in GCS yes. We will have to be monitored. Then we will have to suspect for IC yes. bleed. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. What all are the non-thrombotic causes of pulmonary bulso? Uh, non thrombotic uh, uh, we can we have other causes such as uh, uh, can be seen in air embolism as in septic when we emboli. do septic emboli air embolism Females. seen in mm. central venous conditions or any other yeah. surgeries can cause uh, septic emboli can be seen in any in endocarditis patients mm. infected endocarditis mm. then other uh, pregnancy. causes uh, uh, pregnancy can cause uh, amniotic fluid embolism yes. Can be there. Then fractures of the long mm. bones can uh, fat lead to fat embolism. Yes, uh, other causes uh, we have the uh, less common causes of hydratiliform. Or so in a patient, in a, a patient, uh, bedridden patient or a patient in ICU for uh, three to four days, uh, what all things you should do to prevent uh, DVT and thromboembolic? Uh, thromboembolic. Uh, we have to uh, give the prophylaxis has to be started if the patient mm. Mm. is going to be bedridden for a prolonged time. Then we'll have to start the patient DVT on, uh, prophylaxis. DVT prophylaxis. And Active, uh, uh, so, we will have to start with the dynamic compression stockings and mm. also uh, the injection, uh, either heparin injection or uh, based on the creatinine or mm. low molecular weight heparin. Mm. And, and uh, early mobilization. Early mobilization of the patient as you mm. and, mm. and further, we had after the uh, alteplase injection, we had mm. started the patient on infusion 100 units per hour, mm. 1000 units per hour, mm. we had started infusion mm. and we had uh, continued for almost uh, 5 days. Okay. Uh, along with that also, we had uh, started on uh, river oxaban. Okay. What are all the um, commonly used oral anticoagulants? Oral anticoagulants, uh, we uh, use uh, factor 10 inhibitors like uh, river oxaban, apixaban, mm. uh, then uh, fondaparinux, mm. most commonly used. Mm. So, uh, finally, what happened to this, what happened to this patient? Then we have, with the dose we had started initially, uh, mm. river oxaban at 15 mg mm. uh, BD was started. Okay. And uh, after five days, we had uh, slowly uh, stopped uh, the heparin and continued with the mm. uh, river oxaban. So while mm. uh, starting heparin, we had uh, monitored the APTT values mm. and we had maintained it above twice the uh, mm. limit, mm. twice the uh, upper limit of APTT. Mm. And um, further, we had a uh, patient actually improved within after the alteplase injection started mm. uh, around one hour itself. Mm. Patient started to drastically improve and BP started to pick up. Okay. And we had uh, tapered off uh, NORAD slowly. Mm. Mm. And also the. No chest pain, no chest discomfort. No, no chest discomfort. Breathing difficulty subsided. No, no, uh, breathing saturation and stack apnea, everything was improving. And he also subjectively felt uh, improving of symptoms. And uh, further, we had uh, a plan for a discharge mm. under. Mm. Uh, discharge with uh, the river oxaban. What was the D dimer of this patient? D dimer uh, was around uh, uh, greater than 20. 
വാട്ട് ഇസ് ദ റോൾ ഓഫ് ഡി ഡൈമർ ഇൻ ഇൻ കേസ് ഓഫ് പൽമർ എംബോളിസം ഡി ഡൈമർ ആസ് സച്ച് വി കാൻ ഡയഗ്നോസ് പൽമർ എംബോളിസം ബട്ട് വി ക്യാൻ റൂൾ ഇറ്റ് ഔട്ട് സോ ഇറ്റ് ഹാസ് ഓൺലി എ നെഗറ്റീവ് പ്രൊഡക്റ്റീവ് ആൻഡ് ഇഫ് ഡി ഡൈമർ ഈസ് നെഗറ്റീവ് വി ക്യാൻ റൂൾ ഓഫ് റൂൾ ഓഫ് പൽമർ എംബോളിസം ബട്ട് ഇഫ് ഇവൻ ഇഫ് ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് പോസിറ്റീവ് വാട്ട് ആർ ദ അദർ കോഴ്സസ് ലൈക് ഓഫ് എലിവേറ്റഡ് ഡി ഡൈമർ other causes sepsis patients will mm. have uh, mm. or any uh, stroke patients so it's non specific non specific mm. uh, okay so uh, basically uh, we should be knowing how to approach a patient with breathing difficulty in er so here the patient uh, 42 year old male patient no? presented with complaints of sudden onset of breathlessness on arrival patient was having tachycardia tachypnea uh, and uh, dis hypoxia was there and uh, chest x-ray was normal uh, mm-hmm. point of care ultrasound uh, it is very important uh, it was not showing any b lines right no, no and uh, echo was echo showing echo. rv dilatation, uh, R-A-R-V R-A-R-V dilatation. and uh, in view of hemodynamic instability um, we have started uh, on uh, thrombolysis patient heparin was started heparin was started thrombolysis mm. vitals were monitored, monitored. and uh, patient improved symptomatically right okay uh, what is well score Uh, well score uh, is one of the uh, scoring system we use to uh, mm. support the diagnosis of pulmonary embolism okay. so we have now recently is the modified well score modified well score so okay. there uh, parameters are if there is any we have to check for any signs or symptoms of dvt mm. so for this patient also we had done a doppler uh, mm. venous doppler was done and there was no evidence of dvt okay then other uh, we should, uh, if the uh, there are signs and symptoms of dvt we will assign a score of 3 okay and if there are uh, no other alternative diagnosis as mm. in we are suspecting pulmonary embolism itself then it will be around 3 mm. then again heart rate we have to check if it is more than 100 uh, we will give a score of 1.5 okay then uh, same for the immobilization more than 3 days or any surgery recent surgery in uh, mm. one month uh 1.5 will give again previous histories also of dvt mm. or pulmonary embolism 1.5 okay hemoptysis again 1.5 and uh, hemoptysis will be given as 1 mm. and uh, malignancy with active treatment as in this patient will be mm. given as 1 mm. so if based on the score uh, if it is uh, mild moderate mo- if less than or equal to 4 mm. we will uh, say pulmonary embolism unlikely unlikely 2 and 6 uh, was the cut off previously mm. now modified score less than or equal to 4, 4. is uh unlikely at uh, pulmonary embolism and more than 4 we will have to suspect pulmonary embolism. okay for this patient uh, around we got 5.5 okay so another uh, scoring is uh, pulmonary embolism uh, rule out criteria uh, pulmonary embolism uh, rule out criteria is basically mm. uh, we, we if we have a less uh, suspicion for pulmonary embolism we mm. usually mm. use that score to rule out pulmonary embolism mm. what are the eight factors eight, uh, eight factors age uh, less than mm. 50 will be there mm. uh, then other causes uh, pulse rate uh, mm. pulse rate less than 100 mm. then uh, oxygen saturation more than 94 percentage mm. then no uh, neuronal leg swelling mm. hemoptysis mm. no surgery or trauma mm. within 6 weeks mm. no previous dvt or pulmonary embolism uh, or any uh, no or- oral hormone mm. agent use okay so if all eight criteria are uh, negative eight, uh, negative we can rule, we can rule out, out pulmonary embolism if any one is yes we have to suspect it mm. okay anything else you want to add uh, so um, i read more about uh, approach to a patient with breathing difficulty thank you